Hello everyone! I watched a lot of horror movies in quarantine and I decided I was gonna do the worst videos I've watched in quarantine video. I have three terrible movies to talk about. This might be a long video and I will be putting timestamps here of the movies and when their reviews start if you're interested in something specific and don't want all this shit. The first is a movie called The Sublet. It's from 2015. It is a mystery horror drama. I tend to have liked those during quarantine because that's most of what I watch and possession movies. Those are the two things I mainly watched in quarantine and that's okay. However, this one was not okay. I was intrigued with this movie, but I quickly started to hate it. And then I was like, I have to get through it so I can bitch about it. So the sublet is directed by John Ainsley. We're just going to go. It stars Tiana Nori because she's the main focus of this movie it is extremely long, drawn out. There is a ridiculous amount of buildup for little payout. A lot of the buildup is very natural for the supernatural genre. I will say that, but it was really too drawn out. The acting was good, so I can't fully hate it. It wasn't B-rate acting. It was definitely good. I did like how some of the history of the previous tenants of this sublet was divulged and released. It wasn't fully predictable, but it was way too slow. I think I actually fell asleep and had to start it over again. They did a good job with the editing of making you feel crazy like the character was experiencing, so I do give credit for that as well as the costumes because there were some historical costumes involved in this. But I never felt for any of the characters with the writing and the acting. I just, I didn't give a flying fuck, which is never what you want in a horror movie. You want to care when your characters die or root when they die because they're such a terrible person. Didn't get that with any character in this movie. Mind you, there's not a whole lot, but I didn't get that period. So spoiler alert, I don't care if you watch this movie, but the ending is the main character dies and the cycle begins again, but now she's the ghost that is mixed up in all the shit. It's fucking stupid. It was ridiculous. It, at least there was some level of creativity, but I fucking hated this movie and I give it a two out of five because there was good things about it. And I begrudgingly give it a two out of five. So that's movie number one that I watched in quarantine that I hated. The next one I watched was Girl on the Third Floor. It is from 2019. It is directed by Travis Stevens and it stars CM Punk, Tristy Kelly Dunn, and Sarah Brooks. And according to IMDb that I'm looking at right now, I am disappointed this won award. And it, what did it win? Brooklyn Horror Film Fest, Best Gooey Effects. I won't argue with that one. That one, Best gooey effects. That one is well deserved for this movie. Um, Fangoria, best first feature, best makeup. I don't know. I oh no, okay, makeup was nominee. It shouldn't have been nominated, but it didn't win. Best feature film, I guess if this is Travis Stevens' first film, it was better than most people's first films. So I won't argue with the awards this movie got, however, it definitely should not have been nominated for best makeup effect. Nominated for being different? I'll give them that one. Not a win. But I'll, I will give them be being different. That actually really is. Okay. That's good. I'm up for movies that want to be creative and do different types of horror, but this one was confusing as fuck. I'm not even going to go into that. You can go to IMDb and read the synapses. All right, first of all, the one thing I liked, it definitely felt like a level of ode to Evil Dead. So I will give him that. CM Punk's portrayal of his character was very reminiscent of a younger Bruce Campbell. A for effort for trying to have different uniquenesses, but it didn't work. CM Punk's angry outbursts for his character who was an alcoholic trying to fix his house and he's just an all-around douchebag kind of guy. Like, ladies, if you're with this guy, just, just get out. Just don't. Don't deal with this shit. The angry outbursts, I get why they were there, but they didn't flow. They didn't feel natural. It was just like, what the fuck are you thinking, writers? I didn't like this character at all, and he's our main character. And I don't think the point of the movie was you were supposed to hate him. I mean, he was the one we were going through all of the confusion and the what's going on shit with. So 
I don't think he was intended to be disliked, but I fucking hated the character. And this is another movie, like the last one, you just don't feel for any of the characters. Like, I, I didn't care if anybody- no, I take it back. There was one character I cared if they lived or died, the only decent character, and he died. And I was like, alright, well, I'm not necessarily surprised, but that was bullshit. To me, the title makes absolutely no sense with how the story actually plays out. It it doesn't. I, I get the stretch to the title. I don't get the title. It should have been named something else. I don't know what. I don't get it. I don't get the movie. Why is it a fucking heart that makes the house? Like, why is the house on the heart? I, so many bad choices movie the ending oh my god the ending was so all over the place i didn't even want to rewind it to try and understand it because i understood enough to go well that was a lazy ending but you made it convoluted and ridiculous and bullshit and it went so many places it didn't need to go it shouldn't have gone it was unnecessary which is one reason i give them a for trying to be outside the box but sometimes you need to still stay partially in the box and push the box not just go oh off the cliff into who fucking knows what is what so i hated the movie i hated it i gave it one zombie vert out of five the one is because of some of the creativity i mean the wall basically gives birth to a creature the creature we've seen before she comes out of an outlet like it's giving birth to her hence the gooey award but even that that character design doesn't fully make sense when you learn about that character history like nothing about it actually makes sense it doesn't all right i've beat that one enough that we're gonna move on the last one i'm gonna be honest i didn't finish but i decided to review it for multiple reasons one i was super excited it's called inner demon i was super excited for this movie because it's australian i fucking love australian and new zealand horror movies and this movie poster is fucking brilliant right and then there's the synopsis a teenage girl is abducted by a serial killer couple and manages to escape and find refuge in an isolated farmhouse, only discover it is a home to greater horrors and a malevolent spirit. Basically, she's like, gets possessed. That's what I interpreted. Well, that's what drunk me interpreted the first time I watched this movie, looking for something for drunk me to continue to watch because I didn't want to go to bed. Oh my God, I can't even. I don't even know where to start with this movie and I didn't even finish it. I, I guess it's directed by Ursula Drabowski, so there's that that's a good place to start um what i did watch did have really good use of lighting our character was locked up in a closet for a while and some of the only lighting was through little people it is not a movie to do other things to you do have to pay attention and even then it's hard to care about these characters and so many why are you doing this i just i don't know i just don't know it was so slow and drawn out and then when things happened it was used to show how bad these people were but it was not even done well the acting was terrible for the most part there was some interesting camera angles interesting cinematography decisions i don't know okay so like i said i did try to watch it drunk I was like, okay, maybe I am too drunk to appreciate this movie. So let's put this on hold and try watching it sober. I did that and I struggled to get beyond the place that I had originally turned it off. I was like more than halfway through this movie and she still hadn't escaped to get to this isolated farmhouse where there's supposed to be a malevolent spirit. And that's what I fucking wanted to see. I didn't want to see all this other shit. So I went in expecting, looking for something that this movie didn't have to offer, but I don't think this movie had anything good to offer. And since I didn't finish it, I can't rate it, but I still wanted to bitch about it. And the fact that I couldn't force myself through this, I feel says a lot. I just don't know what to think. And I can't continue ranting because I didn't finish watching it. If you're new here, welcome to my horror channel. I discuss horror movies and I do art usually in regards to them. But not today. Today's a bitch fest. Terrible things that I watched in quarantine. You're welcome. Thank you to my patrons. I appreciate you hanging with me through all of this time. I know it's not easy for everyone. So thank you for hanging around. 
thank you for supporting thank you to those who are even watching and supporting and subscribing and commenting and commenting blah, 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 blah. and commenting i greatly appreciate all the interactions so from my dark heart to yours have a wonderful day and please don't die before my next video